Implicit bias. There are two types of bias, explicit and implicit. Explicit bias is the bias you are aware of, and implicit bias is unconscious bias. First coined in 1995, implicit bias refers to the attitudes or stereotypes that affect our understanding, actions, and decisions in an unconscious manner. If you are convinced that you do not have implicit bias, you wouldn't know it. It is unconscious. In fact, this aspect makes it difficult to self-identify. Implicit bias may run counter to your deeply held beliefs without you realizing it. It is quite possible that your explicit biases run contrary to your implicit biases, and you would not be aware of it. How does this happen? There are two types of thinking, quick instinctive and slow and methodical. The former may help us identify patterns more quickly and even protect us from potential threats that may have helped us survive thousands of years ago. However, it is fallible. It can lead to many results that are dangerous and harmful. How can implicit bias be harmful? Because it is unconscious, it can permeate all aspects of society. This impedes notions of fairness or impartiality that will help promote the best people for jobs. Studies have revealed that implicit bias exists in our healthcare, legal system, workplace, and everyday life. Implicit bias in healthcare in the U.S. contributes to women and racial minorities experiencing less accurate diagnoses, curtailed treatment options, less pain management, and worse clinical outcomes. Moreover, the same implicit bias affects communication, collaboration, performance reviews, as well as promotion. Implicit bias can show up in areas that you wouldn't expect. As it is undetected, it can undermine the success of institutions as well as being injurious to individuals. By unfairly biasing our choices, we are promoting unjust behavior that can impede success, such as in the sciences, because the best person for the job was not actually selected due to favoritism based on arbitrary qualities. Research shows that when presented with identical resumes, various biases occur when changing one variable that is not relevant for selecting a job. Having an ethnic sounding name or one that is more associated with a minority will significantly decrease the chances of being selected for a position. Even more surprising is that when shown pictures revealing relative heights, the taller candidate will be greatly advantaged. This advantage is so significant and consistent that those under the average height are speculated to make more than $2,000 less a year for every inch below average. Similar biases have been recorded for applications BMI. Thus, many individuals are being denied equal opportunity, while others are being afforded positions that they may not even be qualified for. Further, their promotion is heavily influenced by what Rawls would call morally arbitrary properties. Luckily, there is hope. Orchestras used to be mostly composed of male musicians, even though admittance should be based on musical skill. When auditions started using blind review for musicians, there was a significant increase in female musicians being selected. A simple way to overcome this implicit bias was to add a curtain between the judges and the applicant. Does this solve all problems of implicit bias? No. However, it does show that sometimes we can modify the process to help correct unfairness and minimally promote impartiality. The first step in battling implicit bias is recognizing that it exists and you also have implicit biases. Only then can we take steps to identify what they may be and how we can help ensure that these do not unfairly influence important decisions. While this is not easy, it is critical for promoting a more just and effective society where we can have better healthcare workers, police officers, teachers, as well as better people.